everyone. Uh, welcome back to Little More Closer. Uh, this is me, Shweta, from Posso Perspective. Uh, you would be seeing me back with Little More Closer often now. And uh, we have Aarti and Nida also along with us today, uh, talking more um, about this topic, intimacy with self. And uh, we came up with a lot of things to talk about. So we got really excited doing it in parts. And the first part, we would be talking about sexual self-pleasure. Um, I think you most, like all of us here, would be hearing about self-pleasure and how we sort of like really reduce the volume around sexual self-pleasure. Um, and that how we do not want to talk about it to our friends, colleagues, anybody who we come across. Or we sort of try to talk it talk it out indirectly, um, but so let's go a little more closer around why we do that or how we sort of want to be able to talk about it um, more openly and, uh, and and to actually call out uh, how much of a fun and pleasure it is. So uh, just around the same thing, I was just wondering um, about how you know there are a lot of words associated with this. Um, and just for example, like the two words that were coming to my mind uh, is masturbation and, uh, you know, sexual intimacy. Um, these words are so hidden um, or they're so associated with one specific gender and not really a lot. So are there any views that you guys have to talk about it? Or any more words that you're coming up with that are most uh, hidden or not spoken out loud? Mm -hmm. Nita, do you want to go? Um, yeah, so uh, before answering your question, I think uh, I'm speaking from my own experience and whatever I have witnessed about, about self-pleasure and things like that. Um, the fact that we don't openly call it masturbation, right? We use terms like self-pleasure or going solo. I think going solo was a major term when I was in college, when people used to, uh, you know, uh, engage in that. And just how, how even in say, talking about it, we are hidden and closed about it, right? Because, um, because of the ideas around what masturbation means or, you know, uh, the, the shame or stigma associated with self-pleasure and um, masturbation, right? I think when you asked me what other words come to your mind, I think going solo was, uh, that came to my mind. Like that was something that college people used a lot uh, in those times, yeah. Um, I also, you know, when I was growing up, I, I don't think there was any language around um, around masturbation or self-pleasure. Uh, I remember in school um, that it was spoken about as something shameful um, and, uh, and people were teased about it. Um, so, and, and then of course, uh, growing up, there has been, you know, just being in a very cis heteronormative culture, we don't, uh, for a fab women uh, of a certain generation as mine, I think we don't, there is no language around uh, self pleasure. You know, um, we, we speak about, I think today we have so much language around things like, um, you know, relationship escalators also, right? Like the idea that um, intimacy is only sought in another person that intimacy is only summed up. I, I don't think there was any language around um, around masturbation or self-pleasure. Uh, I remember in school um, that it was spoken about as something shameful um, and uh, and people were teased about it. Um, so and and then of course uh, growing up there has been you know just being in a very cis heteronormative culture, we don't, uh, for a fab women uh, of a certain generation as mine, I think we don't, there is no language around uh, self-pleasure. 
you know, um, we, we speak about, I think today we have so much language around things like, um, you know, relationship escalators also, right? Like the idea that um, intimacy is only sought in another person, that intimacy is only so sought in another person. And then that um, whatever then you get as a result of seeking intimacy in a, in a relationship with another person, that's all you've got. Um, and for most AFAB women, um, you know, penetrative sex is actually not pleasurable. Um, you know, and, um, and, uh, and this is also, you know, and then what is pleasure? Um, how do I seek pleasure? How do I explore my body? Um, becomes just uh, issues of identity altogether, right? When we're talking about intimacy. Yeah. You know, when, so when you, there's a when lot you to unpack. Sorry, when you thing. ask those questions, what is pleasure? Uh, it suddenly made me think about how the word pleasure itself has so many ideas around it. And is so as a woman, I mean, as a woman, I have, I think, experienced just saying that, that there is a hitchkey in saying that word itself. You know, while growing up, not now, but like while growing up, that used to happen. And and I think there was just this idea that um, women don't do it or women don't do it as often. It was so gender biased as well. Yeah, it's just those questions, if those questions were asked, uh, like if you ask those questions to yourself, it really unpacks a lot of things I think what is pleasure for yourself what is pleasure for your body yeah uh, thank you for calling out um, you know these really uh, important aspects as well and, and I'm just hearing to both of you um, um, I kind of like sort of felt um, you know what was it like growing up uh, and then um, it, it was not even known for me I mean I was like or did I ever know in my even college days about, you know, talking about it and, and to sort of like, you know, not that I didn't know what it was in my body, but how uh, I didn't have any sort of language to that. And, um, and, um, and, and to see it is so evident that how um, uh, coming from spaces uh, in different times as in different uh, time locations that I was uh, seeing myself like being at the college um, and then moving into uh, you know post graduation as well. Um, how um, just the idea of talking about it became so different. Like it was a complete mute at one point of time, uh, but then we would like Nida mentioned of uh, you know uh, you don't do it often or you do it uh, and not like do what. <laughs> and like, uh, so I'm uh, trying to have my me time or like, oh, am I planting plants or, or am I watching plants or what am I doing? Like me time. <laughs> so there's so much of an hesitation to using any words around it. Uh, and especially like even what you even uh, um, brought it up, Neda, for women uh, and like even Aarti was mentioning. Uh, for the most part of your life, how you were sort of uh, seeing that just the idea of pleasure was sort of like so abstract as well. Um, and that there's no space to sort of, you know, go deeper there. Um, I mean, at least back then or now how, you know, going solo, uh, these are the words that we sort of talk about, but not really communicate, um, you know, what it is uh, or, or to really be able to explore that. Um, and thank you for pointing out these things from your experiences. Um, you know, I was wondering uh, what makes this um, um, so much, uh, you know, evident, uh, just to talk about the stigma that is around it. Um, and especially in the, um, I mean, in, in just the spaces that we sort of, you know, even with um, people we are interacting with, um, you know, would you want to talk about some experiences, how you see the stigma being purely uh, there, just laid there? 
especially maybe in the relationships that we sort of see clients as well. I think um, some of the things that uh, come up in my mind that indicate um, that, you know, talking about self-pleasure or masturbation um, is there's a stigma, is um, in so many ways, right? Like, um, I think for me, the biggest thing that I'm seeing at the moment is just this idea of um, how we equate um, masturbation or, or stimulation, right? Like sexual stimulation as something that is, um, that you, 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 you find only in a relationship with another. And, mm -hmm. and that um, it, it shows up even within intimate relationships that, um, you know, um, there, there are stories of experiences of um, partners feeling upset that the other one is, you know, uh, that their partner is self-stimulating or, you know, pleasure is, is having pleasure by themselves going solo, um, you know? Um, and, and so there is this, you know, almost this feeling of if I'm doing that within an intimate relationship, that means that my partner is going to think, and my partner might think that uh, they are not good enough, you know? Um, whereas there is, there is so much, even within relationships, there's so much possibility of, um, and opportunities for exploration. If you're able to sort of include self-stimulation, self-pleasure as an important part of your relationship. Um, uh, also pleasure, um, just this, this discovery of my body and what happens in my body is so important, ha has been so important in so many of our queer journeys as well. You know, for me, it has been important to understand um, what does my body want, just sort of acknowledging what is important, what's, what's down there, you know, um, all of that is just so important in, in, in recognizing pleasure from this pleasure and asking for what one wants um, then becomes important as well. Yeah, and, and I'm also thinking about, um, you know, times when there is uh, gender dysphoria, right? Like I don't feel like myself in my body, then, then pleasure often becomes intertwined with um, the shame of being who I am in my body. And that, that requires so much unpacking because what we're unpacking is, wait, your body knows something in spite of this dysphoria that, that is a result of what the system is putting upon me. Uh, my body knows something about who I am and what it is to feel pleasure and safety in this body is taken away and erased because the world doesn't allow me to just rest in what I believe about myself. So that requires so much unpacking as well. Yeah. It just reminded me how of, um, uh, for a few, how there are very less spaces, like physical spaces that they can sort of, you know, um, talk to their bodies, uh, understand their bodies and really explore what is, uh, what is pleasure for them within their bodies and how, um, and then it becomes about informed by, okay, probably these are the ways that um, I can sort of seek pleasure for my body um, and, and, and being caught up with, um, you know, those stories that probably once I'm, you know, having a partner, um, maybe I will be able to seek pleasure. Um, and that's how, because the system sees that, you know, you are supposed to seek pleasure um, once you are engaged with your own partner and not really by your own self and how by your own self is a really wrong thing to do. Yeah. You know, this reminds me of uh, certain ideas that were around while growing up that it's wrong according to religion to uh, engage in self pleasure and and that is that takes away from 
like i felt as a muslim woman i don't want to generalize it but for me it was like it took me away from my own body i didn't know what comfort and pleasure looked like in my own body and even if we talk about uh getting intimate in a relationship or finding pleasure in a relationship if we don't know what our body wants or needs as pleasure then how will we even say or ask for it right then it becomes this one sided thing i don't know right i mean it's it's it reminds me of how uh, one a friend of mine was getting married and she uh she was scared about having sex and she didn't know what to do and she was like i don't know what what uh, you know i know like what it, what people do in sex but i'm very scared of uh being in that intimate space right and then we started talking about how mm-hmm. she can become intimate with herself with her own body and see what it feels like to be intimate so that she can allow for intimacy in the relationship with whoever she wants right and i think i think it then it becomes important to know your body to feel your body uh to actually be in your body while that is happening but there are certain i have also heard stories where people um as a way of uh dissociating or as a way of dealing with certain difficult emotions they uh self pleasure and yeah. and yeah. and the, the the release that happens is actually a physi- physiological response that happens and that is so soothing for them when they are having this disconnection with themselves right and mm-hmm. yeah i think these are some of the things that are coming to my mind as we talk about this yeah it actually reminds me of how one in one of our conversations there was an aspect of, of how um, you know it helps me to sort of calm my mind and sleep and that my anxiety just is calm down when i sort of i'm able to masturbate or feel pleasure for myself um and and that sort of like soothes me as well and how like uh, to just what you said with the um, like i just remembered about how you know it's a way of coping uh, that also is seen for our people um yeah 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 uh, both these ideas are so important to consider in what you said one thing being uh, you know when we don't know our bodies um what are we going to achieve in relationships uh, yeah. you know um especially because um you know we go i mean i again i'm talking from that lens of sort of being in a very uh, in living in a cis heteronormative world we often if you're told um intimacy is in relationships then you don't explore your body um you don't i mean there's so many things about a uh, consent we we miss out on right like we things like saying a no uh evades us yeah. uh what i want and resting in the knowledge of what my body knows of as pain and pleasure yeah. evades us yeah um and so and and again like that's one thing i was thinking about and the other thing is just like the media messages of of what pleasure is is just mm-hmm. so skewed um and and it's so gendered and then it's so skewed in terms of what they say is pleasurable that mm-hmm. there's not enough information on how actually sexual intimacy is connected to relational intimacy and relational intimacy with yourself and with another person right and mostly first with yourself um mm-hmm. and it's such a key piece um and that's the thing that the other piece that you were talking about with respect to coping right what shweta was saying as as coping that people use people uh, self you know masturbate or um or um you know self pleasure and see it as shame because they're using it as a coping to feel better when they're feeling extremely distressed now i i feel like there's such a 
treasure of information there right like your body knows pain your yeah. body knows pleasure right and this is something we talk about with chronic pain as well right like um in the face of chronic pain there are moments you feel of rest in the body or pleasure in the body you know something your body knows something and if we don't uh, till into ways in which we can feel pleasure in our body we're missing out on on just ways in which we navigate in the world also right mm-hmm. what really stands out from um, hearing you both uh, is um, just opening so much for me uh, like there was just a moment of oh my god wow uh, when when you just uttered that your body just knows so much pain and the body knows so much of pleasure uh and 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 that how it's so much again associated with shame because of the uh you know the petronometer world that we are around the systems that call out these things so much um and 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 just to sort of uh what was coming up more and more was how um, it's so important to be so connected with your own body um and and to know and ask it what it really likes dislikes uh what it wants to say no for what it wants to say yes for um and and that is coming up so much more um explicitly here in our conversation that it's not um that you do not know how to associate with another person um in in a relationship as well if you do not know really how to being able to associate to yourself um and yeah, i think that really stands out Um, from the conversation as well. Is there anything more that you would want to add? You know how um, I was thinking about the word shame and also stimulation. And I was thinking that stimulation, like you can get stimulated anywhere at any time, right? And just like getting turned on, correct? Correct. and then you are you attach that physiological response to shame so much that only that experience makes you feel so guilty and like ashamed when it's just something so natural right and um, perhaps teenagers experience this a lot right like they might get turned on they might you know experience certain things in their body and they might not know what is happening and all these ideas around the, the stigma around what is happening in the body that people tell instead of their own experience can make them feel so ashamed of themselves right that's what it's getting me think about like stimulation is just like an external stimuli is making you feel certain things right and it's just such a natural thing but we attach so much of i don't know ideology character morals everything to it yeah that's what i've been thinking about what are your where is this taking you both <laughs> i think it's really making me attach these dots of shame uh fear and then uh, what values we hold to ourselves uh being in the systems around and that if i'm holding these value systems then how pleasure is so much away from me or i should keep it away from me um and how often there is so much of struggle in this uh, growing up when you talked about teenagers um how uh, you know just trying to you know be in an environment and and at then stepping out to um uh, you know finding spaces of you know connecting to bodies and connecting to your own self um but how that still becomes such a struggle um just from the experiences of talking to a few teens uh, i have come across how that you know i i mean i'm so scared that you know um and ter- like one of my uh, interactions with a, a, a person that i, I do not want to take a or uh, but you know just an interaction with this person uh, made me sort of hear very dif- differently that how um, to be thinking about 
my body a certain way uh, made me go into a nightmare of uh, these uh, religious uh, images that were coming to my mind telling me that how it's such a wrong thing to do and why are you sort of like you know putting yourself into this and so i need to be able to distance myself from here um, and that i cannot really like you know seek pleasure uh, but what are you actually giving yourself is love and that you telling yourself that i need to keep myself away from love is what sort of came up in that conversation and it got me reminded of yeah. 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 You know, it's making me think about how um, pleasure is an act of self-soothing sometimes. Like, you know, um, like if I want to feel good, if I want to feel uh, something, I would want to pleasure myself. Like just a hand touch or, you know, maybe like touching your hair, anything. And you can just simply explore your body. right and then some like for me it was just a random discovery <laughs> when that happened mm-hmm. right but why are we attaching like why are we why are we attaching these ideas to these body parts right they are my body parts i own them mm-hmm. and i i know what like what i want what i want to do with them then why are these ideas attached to it why is it such a big shame to explore my own body right why are we sexualizing body parts <laughs> and i mean it's just making me think about a lot of these things mm-hmm. <laughs> um i don't know where i heard this but i i i was thinking about some of the things as well um um i was thinking my my brain is the most uh, you know self stimulating thing ever you know like i just close my eyes and go off somewhere into fantasy fantasy land and like you can just have the most pleasurable experience in that moment um you know so yeah so there is just so many ways to experience pleasure but yeah. just so much um like shame around it especially um i want to say especially uh it's also gendered right so yeah yeah you know when you say gender it's me it's reminding me of how this was spoken about in college like uh boys used to talk about it openly like girls are sitting there and boys are sitting there and the boys are like oh we watched porn and we you know this that right and girls wouldn't talk about it right among us we knew that we did it but we never spoke about it out loud because it was not allowed or perhaps there was so much shame around it right and and uh, i remember one of my uh, friend I'm, i'm like revealing secrets here on this podcast <laughs> you better hope your friends are not watching <laughs> Yeah. see the thing is you talk about this with our friends right because they are they know they understand right we are the same like like this is just this understanding between friends so like the friends bro- like the friend walked in on his brother doing it and but that was the entire like if boys did it it was still okay like if you walked in on somebody like that then we know that they have reached an age and they will obviously do it mm-hmm. and then there was this other friend who said mera bhai bhi abhi wo age pe aa raha hai and i'm scared of walking in on him this was a girl talking about her the her brother so these were the kind of conversations around uh, you know mm-hmm. self pleasure and masturbation i don't know what was it like for you having these conversations with people yeah um yeah i think for uh, just to to even recollect um there are very uh, you know very strange memories or this just very uh, little aspects where these conversations would heighten like talk talked so much um 
I mean, I, I'm really thinking of like, you know, were there spaces that I was able to have these conversations? Uh, were there spaces that I was able to, um, you know, even talk about that, you know, oh, what is uh, uh, pleasure for me? Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree with that, actually. For me, too, uh, I think uh, my circles were primarily like a, a fab women. Um, and uh, um, I don't know. Like, there wasn't, there wasn't, the, I mean, and most of us had, like, uh, siblings who are also a fab. So, you, you know, that conversation with my brother never happened. Um <laughs> you know and yeah man like just uh, it's it's unfortunate that we make uh, i think again growing up uh, with so much shame around sexuality um you know you talk about just having discovered it just tumbling upon it i had to like make clear intention of like you know what this is i need to go here if i want to be <laughs> if i want to continue to work in this field you know what am i going to tell people about pleasure <laughs> if i don't know jack shit yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> much later in my 20s did i i i cracked open a book read about like my body and like you know explored yeah okay that's there this is here okay oh yes i'm feeling this you know <laughs> so it had to be a very inten- intentional journey um which gave me a lot of language gave me to very empowering to say wait i know how to say yes now and no now you know so it was so important um for me personally to take on that journey um yeah i'm very intentionally that too uh, because of a, of a culture around me that there was just silence around pleasure silence around pleasure you know um you know when you just uh, both of you told about uh, what all the stigma can do uh, around uh, you know being able to connect with our own bodies it reminds me on the other side of it where um, you know people who really are coming out to talk about it how they've been shut off by saying that oh i think you just need to watch porn uh, if you want to really explore what that means oh, or uh, <laughs> <laughs> or probably you just uh, you know i sort of discovered it uh, for myself through this this way um so probably you should go and to try find it uh, for yourself maybe like this maybe this would help but really rather talking about it in a very direct way of suggestions and advices that what worked for you can be so traumatizing for another person what if like that person didn't like porn <laughs> and and, and that has so much to do with what you really uh, would like for yourself and and that is because uh, of my own experience of like uh, you know like um, it was very interesting to see how um, this was one of uh, sitting with meditation and loving kindness where uh, i did held my body in a certain way with my hands on my chest uh, which made me really discover that it was so pleasurable to have be holding myself in that way to hold my tummy a certain way and and if that also is like you know an act of like you know giving love to yourself and being really intimate with your own body um, or, or just uh, you know like it that it need not just go into an act um of what is so out loudly spoken uh, but it can be very intrinsic for a few as well so uh, i think it just reminded me of talking about that other side as well any thoughts uh you know it's, it's making me think about how for me personally uh self pleasure has helped a lot with my body image and i think there's a direct correlation between body image and self pleasure because the more intimate i get with my own body the more i see it as it is the more i know how to love it the more i i feel better about my own body the other ideas around my body don't matter to me i can make love to my scars and be okay with it that's what it feels like yeah yes i totally agree with that yeah. 
And you know how, how... Guys feeling. Sorry. <laughs> I'm thinking about different ways people find self pleasure. You know, it's just stimulation of clitoris is not the only way to uh, self pleasure. Some people use toys. Some people just like, I think, rubbing or something like that. I don't know. There are a lot of ways that people find pleasure. and they know something like everybody discovers it at some point or the other that the body knows something about pleasure about the stimulation right and and what what would happen if we had spaces that actually spoke out about this then what would happen <laughs> more fun and <laughs> um do you guys think of words that are coming to your mind what um, pleasure means to you uh, if we have to sort of just you know use this conversation to talk about um giving out one word to what pleasure means is there anything any word phrase i am thinking about confidence i am <laughs> i am feeling or this visual is that uh, after giving yourself that pleasure you walk up like you walk with that confidence <laughs> that's the image that i am getting yeah i think for me it's the um... intimacy 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 with oneself i think there is a lot of ways and important ways to build intimacy and i think uh, that pleasure pleasure is one of the most important ways to build intimacy so intimacy comes up for me yeah i think the word for me is freedom uh um, mm-hmm. yeah a lot of freeness so it's like freeness freedom and like okay freeness freedom <laughs> yeah intimacy confidence and freedom <laughs> yes and that's yeah, what that's... you get <laughs> when you connect <laughs> your bodies <laughs> i know right um and it was really uh, wonderful to sort of just uh, you know come um, closer to our conversation i was just wondering about you know how it went from um you know n- not being able to use words uh, and 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 that the space happened uh, mm. to being able to talk about uh, like the words that around are used around the stigma um you know go alone <laughs> go solo uh, to coming about uh, talking about how it's uh, both to do with connecting with your own body and knowing spaces that are are pleasurable that are painful mm. also uh, and um and and that how it is impossible or not really possible to um you know seek pleasure from your partners when you do not are really connected with your own bodies uh and to coming down to how um, it just emerges into confidence freedom and you know, that intimacy with your own self from our experiences mm. in self mm. um yeah this is beautiful guys um you know it's uh, it's making me think about one more thing that uh in relationships also in intimate relationships there is a stigma around how can you uh, masturbate while being in bed with me because i am supposed to stimulate you i am supposed to give you pleasure but sometimes it's okay sometimes it feels better when you do it yourself and your partner can be there to stimulate you in other ways like there can be a loving touch somewhere around your body that helps you more right and that is also okay it's the the relational space then the intimacy in the relationship then right so yeah there are so many ways for self pleasure and i think it comes down to a lot of communication yeah have, um, being able to build that 
um, enriched space that allows for a lot of um, intimate connection. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you so much that you were able to be a part of this and share uh, uh, share with so much of uh, you know joy and happiness as well. To talk yeah. about I this. hope my friends don't kill me. <laughs> That's oh, all. We hope too. <laughs> Let's just say you have lots of friends. Yes, I have lots of friends. Anybody who, who can relate is a friend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, people, don't go back to Nida asking her if it was their story that she shared. <laughs> yes. Uh, so like all of you are seeing here, these are a uh, little more closer is a space that can, um, that who all are watching here can also come up with uh, telling us about topics that you want to go more closer with, be a part of our conversations as well. Uh, so please do... Uh, you know, come up with uh, letting us know uh, what your experiences were um, in our chat boxes down. Uh, and also, uh, you know, let us know if you want us to address some of these uh, topics that are out loudly, you know, visible, but how they're not really seen. Um, and how we do not want to, um, you know, talk about this uh, or be volume down or, or, you know, turn down the volume to talk about things um, so on the same lines uh, I'm hoping there are more conversations among your own friends and uh, peers whomever you feel comforting uh, thank you for watching